Okay, um, I'm not going to sit down, I'm going to walk about because I'm nervous. Um, what I was asked to do was, was link good environmental status, and by that I mean the um, EC definition of good environmental status, not what perhaps the general public think of as good environmental status, and what that means in terms of MSY. And, and perhaps like a number of the other speakers, this was a learning exercise for me as well. So this is stuff that, that I've stolen from uh, lots of other people in that traditional executive scientist way, and then some real work that Mike did at the end. Um, so I'm going to start with I'm going to start with a, 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 a lesson. You know, let's pretend you're all my students and I'm telling you stuff. So this is the this is the GES as defined by the Commission. Now I've highlighted a few words so you don't have to read everything. I always tell people never to put more than <laughs> six words on a slide. Um, ecologically diverse is what we're after. <coughs> Clean, healthy, and productive seas, and the use of the marine environment as a level that is sustainable. Use and sustainable are key here. This is the um, 11 good environmental status indicators. The, they go through to things like eutrophication, uh, hydrographic alteration, marine litter. My personal favorite, ICES has developed a, a, a Latin binomial for all the litter. Um, the key ones, however, are biodiversity, um, commercial fish, the marine food web, and seafloor integrity. By key, I mean those are the ones that link best and most critically with fishing activity. I put this slide in, but I'm going to pass straight over it very quickly and translate it for you. Biological diversity, biodiversity is one of those great words that we all toss out all the time. We all know what it means. It means puffins and pandas and, and other animals that begin with P. What but at the moment, there are so many indicators for biodiversity available, we don't fully understand how they link to whatever true biodiversity is. But what we're aiming for here is biological diversity in line with prevailing physiographic blah, blah, blah. Uh, three is the populations of commercial exploited fish. And basically, this is the single species um, management of fisheries, which we've done for many years. Four is, is the marine food web, understanding the marine food web. At the moment, it's largely uh, a small number of structural indicators, but it's talking about ensuring the long-term abundance of the species and retention of their full reproductive capacity for those that are critical in the food web. Um, it's quite difficult to interpret, and people are still working on that one. And finally, seafloor integrity, a bit easier to interpret. That's let's not trash every inch of the seabed. Um, which is, of course, what we've done to terrestrial habitats. But let's not stop there. OK, what I wanted to do was, was in, in the next couple of slides, is, is talk about this concept of sustainable use. Um, the, there's a lot of question marks as to what we're after in, in the management of ecosystems. Is it, is it the pristine environment? If you look at OSPAR directives and, and others, it's a pristine environment. Get it back to where it was many years ago. Hugh Fernley Whittingstall in his fish fight was advocating such things. The MSFD directive, to its great credit, talks about this in terms of, of more sustainable use. So it's talking about sustainable use. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of pushing this one because it's important to understand that we're doing, trying to do two things at the same time. We're trying to use the sea sustainably and then we're trying to maintain all the nice bits in it. So it, go, it goes on to say conserving marine ecosystems. So there it is, there's a balance again, and that's what my talk's about. It also comes up with this one, uh, aims to achieve good environmental status by 2020. Um, I'm hoping that, that the bookmakers will start a book on this one soon and to protect the resource base upon which marine-related economic and social activities depend. So there it is again, the duality of sustainable use and maintaining the environment. I went off into the web to look for um, some sort of reference that took this from the opposite direction. My personal view is that you cannot exploit and maintain something as pristine. It may seem like an oxymoron, in fact, 
But I think what we're saying is that if you're going to exploit, if you're going to make use of something, you impact on it. Full stop. It is impossible to exploit something and not impact on it. So the only way to avoid all the effects that we're concerned about in relation to fishing is to stop fishing, and I don't think anybody wants that. I'm going to take a wee aside now, um, and I'm going to talk about this paper by uh, Frozen Pros a couple of years back, and they're looking at what the biomass targets, if you like, for BMSY in the North Sea in, in a few years' time would be. And I, I invite you to think about the ecosystem impacts of this. So, this is, a, it's one of those tables, you don't have to read all this one, just have a look at this one. Um, this is the expected BMSY of COD in, uh, uh, in, in a few years' time, 2.3 million tonnes of COD. That's a 6,251% approximately increase in the abundance of COD. Now, anybody who tells me that's not going to have an ecosystem impact, I, I'm quite willing to judge them as crazy. Interestingly, sand eels goes up to 10 million tonnes, and that's a 1,487% increase. Presumably that's the food web component. However, I, I did a very, a very primitive food web adder and I discovered all the, all the piscivores, uh, of which there's something in it, about 4 million tonnes, are going to be depending on just over 10 million tonnes of forage fish, which is a conversion ratio that um, is a bit dubious. Axel. But you're just undermining my point. How dare you? <laughs> um, it, the, the, the point here is that all these changes will have potential and serious impacts on how we do things, whether it's whether the metabolic rates are different or not. Um, this is a piece of work that Ray Hilborn did a few years back, uh, and this is, is basically an expression of, of ideas. So. The, the big dotted line is the biological yield. That's, that's the sort of flat-topped um, yield per recruit curve we talked about before. Um, Ray's point is oh, we generally manage over here in the overfishing category, um, and perhaps there's a new consensus over here. So here is this thin line here is the maximum economic yield, and, and we've talked about that one already, so that takes you a little further across. What I'd like to point out to you in, in Ray's one is this very thin dotted line here, which is ecosystem preservation. Now, this is a theoretical one. I'll show you a more real one later. Basically, whatever you do in fishing, you start to have an ecosystem impact. So even here at MEY, we're coming down 30% in terms of our ecosystem um, stuff. This is um, some stuff from uh, Boris Worm et al. I think. Um, Pamela was a co-author on this paper. Um, so this is just making, this is modelled work now, it's taking a little bit further. So here's our multi-species MSY. Um, what you've got here is on this curve, you've got the, the total catches, I think, yeah, sorry, total biomass of the population, the green line. So as you approach MSY, your biomass goes down. The guys before me have told you all that. What also goes down is this yellow line, the mean L max. So we're reducing that size diversity in our population. So by the time you're at L max, uh, sorry, your MMSY, you are actually losing diversity within your fish populations. And perhaps the most critical one is this ascending orange line, which is the number of collapsed stocks in your ecosystem. So somewhere about the point of, of multi-species MSY, you're dealing with 40% collapsed fish stocks. So those are, these are the, the ecosystem impacts of fishing even at MSY. So we need to think these things through. Um, I think, I'm not sure how controversial this one is, but whenever I raise seals in Ireland, I get death threats. So um, I'm going to raise seals here. This is the Baltic paper by Zabal et al. a few years back. And this is a, a, an examination of, 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 if you like, the carrying capacity of seals. So this is what you'd get if there was no fishing. And then they looked at what you'd get with various fishing scenarios. So this is status quo. This is running through down to 20% of status quo. This is a precautionary fishing approach. And that's what it was like in 2000. The key point here is 
pretty well, whatever you do, precautionary fishing, 20% of status quo, you will have an impact on seals. Seals are one of the uh, proposed MSFD um, descriptors for food web function structure. Um, I apologise for putting this one up. This is just taking it a wee bit further. The red arrows here are fishing's impact on, on various components of the, of the ecosystem. So for instance, top predators, middle predators, primary mm -hmm. consumers, all with a direct impact. You also have a direct impact of fishing on habitats, that's the, the seafloor integrity component. You also have impacts on decomposers. Um, for the most part, the impacts are negative, so any fishing will cause problems. Now, I, I stole this figure from Andy Kenny. I've been looking pretty well constantly throughout this talk at this curve here. So fishing impacts on fish stocks. Uh, sorry, fishing impacts on the environment. And that's, that's where the MSFD is coming from, and it's what's driving a lot of our perceptions. It's also being perceived by the fishing industry as a threat. It's seen as a, as a real problem. We're talking about reducing their catches, reducing what they do. However, the interaction has a reverse thrust to it, um, is that the environment, the environment that fishing is directly impacting then affects the, the ability of you to fish stocks. There is a backward feed in all this. So the very fishing that you're carrying out is also impacting on your ability to fish in the future. Perhaps that's obvious in terms of fish stocks, but less so in terms of the environment. Uh, as I say, that was stolen from Andy Kenny. This, this whole presentation is basically stolen, you understand. The point I'm trying to make here is, is that we have a trade-off. That's the whole point of this project. And there are trade-offs with every element of the ecosystem that we need to consider. What I think about, what I really liked about Andy Kenny's picture here is, is it makes explicit that link. And it suggests that, in fact, it is entirely in fishermen's interests to um, keep a stable environment which allows them to exploit freely. So the, the thing links back. Now I'm going to finish with a piece of work that, that Mike did, Mike Fitzpatrick, when he was based in, in the University of Cork. This is a mind mapping the Celtic Sea herring fisheries. So this is to establish our credentials as sociologists. Um, so, of course, being a, now moving into my sociologist mode, I, I offer you this. And, and as you can clearly see from that, th 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 this is one person. Uh, we're looking at their understanding of the links between different components of it. I won't go into detail. Just to show you how complex it is, and, and this was done by Mike through a series of interviews with fishermen, processors, um, scientists, NGOs. But this is just one of them. And this is what he gets out of that. Um, and this is a bit easier to understand. So here's, here's the herring stock, which is what we were looking for information about. Here's the influences. The red ones are negative influences. The thickness of the arrow expresses how important people think of these are. So you have the pretty obvious one, that fishing pressure has a direct impact on herring stocks. And then you can wander around this picture looking at other things that are, are considered important. This is their management committee. This is we scientists, so beginning to get a bit smaller. Um, and down here, with this tiny little possibly um, positive link, is ecosystem productivity. Now, so what, what, what we've got here is, is that this group of stakeholders, in general, recognised that ecosystem productivity was an important factor in managing their fish stock, or was a factor in managing their fish stocks, but was not a particularly important one. Um, this, is, this is a difficult one to get across here, but this is, the, Mike then parsed this out into various components. So you have, up here you have the, the long-term health of the Celtic Sea ecosystem. That's why I put it here. So this is what people think about how important that is. Um, across here we have an equitable fisheries governance system, sort of a social, a social component. Across here we have the maintain and develop the, the socio-economic value of the fishery. And over here is the keep that fishery intact and operating. And in that community that you looked at, which had, as I say, many segments of the, of the, the people concerned, the key factor that came out in this analysis was that most people, the biggest interest is to keep the fishery going. Now, that's not surprising, but it does show you the, the uphill struggle or, or, or the job that we have to do 
to illustrate and, and try and get the message across about the other factors involved. The environment has much less weight in that. Uh, what I really, really think is interesting is that the socioeconomic value is, is quite a long way down as well. Within that, you can then parse into each of these individual cells and see what they think is most important by category. So the most important thing for, for ecosystem conservation is to improve decision-making and inclusion of the advice of relevant experts. So that's us. So we do have a door open to us. Um, in terms of the one that's most important to them, they say, um, and, and perhaps this is the issue, they, they say that the most important thing to them is to adhere to the, the management plan and to the long-term reconstruction of the fishery. Um, this one down here for, for the support of the development for equitable, the big one comes out, strengthening industry science partnership. So again, a plea for us to work with them. The one that really blows me away, and, and Mike tells me to be very cautious of this one, is this one over here. This is the socioeconomic stuff. And what the main things that come out of this is to ensure the interests of smaller vessels are protected, that's a social target, and maximize fishing and processing employment, again a social target. This one here, the one that says maximize profitability, which would be your classic expected, you know, whatever we do, let's make loads of money, comes out as the least important socioeconomic target. So what I've tried to give you here is an overview of, of how the, uh, particularly with ecosystem, and then I diverged into social and economic at the end, but it's how the ecosystem components are all impacted by our choice of, of, of um, fishing MSY targets and why we have to include those as constraints in what we're doing. Okay, I'll stop there. Thank you very much.